season. The Deria race is underway, very quick, lights change, Evans dives over to the inside, I think he's just going to get there in front of Sergio Jimenez, Abby Eaton looks to the outside into the first corner, a right left chicane, through the first corner comes Simon Evans, the race leader, and there goes Alice Powell, so she gets ahead and looks to the outside as they come down the start finish straight and there's contact and Jimenez still turning in. Simon Evans, as he did 12 months ago, wins in Diria. And it's second across the line for Sergio Jimenez, ahead of Alice Powell. Away we go, in Diria. Really good start from Jimenez. Algasaibi in the middle, but Jimenez holds the lead. Evans slots into second place. Abby Eaton, I think, might have had a bit of contact with one of the Saudi drivers. Bit of wing mirror banging there between Alice Powell and Yachi Zhang. Through attack mode goes Al Gassabi, comes out still just in front of Mario Haberfeld. He's trying to force the issue quite a bit. Al Gassabi, oh no! And out goes Al Gassabi. Evans is going to look to the inside. Jimenez covers it off. Jimenez holds on. Evans goes in deep and Jimenez wins race two. of the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. We are in Mexico City, and I am sat in pole position with Sergio Jimenez, our championship co-leader. Sergio, co-leader with Simon just behind you. This first turn into turn one is a really difficult one. You've really, really got to claim your racing line with Simon so competitive behind you. What are your options? The option is only one that's uh, the aim is to win. That's what I'm gonna going to do. Now, this car, you, you know this car now really, really well. What's your setup going into this race? Because we've got an extended track here in Mexico. Energy efficiency is key. It's a heavy car, so how have you balanced it up? Well, we find a good balance. We test some, some things in the, in the practice and it worked very well. We, we did a very good uh, lap yesterday that made give us to the pole. And I'm very confident today because uh, the car is in my hand. So starting the pole, make life easy, and uh, I will go in, going to the win. And being sat on pole, does Simon come into the equation at all? He's a fierce competitor. I don't care. Oh, I love that. That's why I like you, Sergio Jimenez. What a guy. All right, Amanda, over to you. Thanks, Vernon. Yes, I'm here with second place man, Simon Evans, racing for Asia, New Zealand. Now, Simon, your brother has just won the Formula E race from second place. What can you do? Yeah, everyone said I need to do the double, so no pressure. Um, he did a really good move at the start. Um, he sent it up the inside. We get pretty even starts in e trophy so I don't think I'll be able to do it there. If the opportunity presents itself, I'll be sending it. Um, so, yeah, but it would be awesome if we could both come away with that. But uh, I've still got 25 minutes and one lap of racing to get through first. You've also got the Brazilian Cacabueno behind you as well. He's looking to certainly get some points, having missed the first two rounds. Yeah, he's going to be a man on the mission to start uh, getting more points, especially with Sergio and I already in front of him for this race. Um, I think he's probably a bit disappointed we didn't get to qualify this morning, but um, I am as well. But that's life, you know. And uh, but both of the Brazilians are going to be fast, uh, so I just need to try. A, I'm in a Brazilian sam, uh, <laughs> hamburger at the moment, so I just need to get on the other side of it. Good luck, Simon. Thanks a lot. I think Vernon is with Kaka. Yes, I am. So I've interviewed both slices of bread in this, uh, in this Brazilian hamburger or hot dog, whatever he calls it. So we've got Sergio Jimenez, Simon Evans, and now Caca Bueno. Caca bueno, it's good to have you back. How does it feel to be good? Always oh, talking. Talk. How, how does it feel to be back in the I-Pace here in Mexico? I'm very happy to be back. Uh, I have a, a quick challenge, you know. Uh, it's got some point for Jimenez and Evans. I'm start behind the both in the grid, make this challenge even harder. But I try to do my best and, and try to win this race and start in the best way my championship in the third race, but my championship start now. All right, thank you very much, Kaka Kaka Bueno there. A fierce competitor, and I, sorry, mate. And I have no doubt that this will be a fierce rivalry reignited between himself, Simon Evans, and obviously Sergio Jimenez. All right, let's go over to our race commentators, Jack Nichols and Hoping Tom. Thank you, Vernon. Looking forward to this one. 25 minutes plus one lap of racing coming up. There you can see the 11 cars lined up on the grid. Jimenez at the bottom, Evans alongside him. And uh, then Caca Bueno in third, Alice Powell in fourth. And then we've got the first of the Pro-Am cars with uh, Fahad Al-Ghasabi. Hoping 
what, what's going to be the key to this race? Kaka Bueno, he wants to get past those two in front, and he needs to, really, if he wants to have any chance in the championship. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think one of the keys to this race will be the attack mode, newly introduced this year in uh, Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. And especially on a track here, new track, much longer straight, the extra power will definitely help you to make that uh, move for position. Yeah, the track is 500 meters longer. Turn one and two are pretty much the same. It's now 2.6 kilometers long, 16 corners. One and two, as I say, are the same. But then when you get to turn three, that's when you turn left instead of right and you get this new bit. Exactly. And we already saw just earlier in the uh, ABB Formula E race that turn three is very tricky. There's only really one line possible. If you go slightly offline, very slippery. Uh, long straights, especially very untypical almost for uh, uh, Jaguar i e Trophy track. Uh, no chicanes anymore here in Mexico. And that last Parabolica almost flat out yesterday in uh, free practice. And I think today, every driver starting with new tires, um, it will be flat. Will it be flat in attack mode as well as normal? Uh, so attack mode is going to give us 20% more power. Um, that will be challenging, I think, but we'll see. Okay, we are just two minutes away from the race start here for the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy, and this is the grid. Sergio Jimenez on pole position. The championship leader coming into this one for Jaguar Racing Brazil. Simon Evans alongside him on the front row. Both had a win and a second in the first two races of the season in Diria. Cacabueno is back. Missed the first meeting, but he's here in third place and looking to climb up the order. Was very strong last year. Fourth is Alice Powell. She is uh, lining up for the Jaguar Ran Racing Team Germany. Then it's the first of the Pro-Am drivers. Fahad Algasebi is in fifth spot. Sixth is Manuel Cabrera, racing for Team China. Two replacement drivers for Jaguar China Racing. The 19-year-old Mexican is one of them. The VIP driver is a former champ car racer, Mario Dominguez, the 44-year-old from Mexico. And then we've got uh, Mash Balajela in eighth place on the grid for Saudi Racing. We've then got another newcomer to the series, that Alberto Baptista, in another of the uh, Jaguar Brazil cars. The gentleman racer starts in ninth on the grid. David Cheng in his second race. He's filling in for the Jaguar China racing team. He did a race in Sanya last year. And at the back, Takuma Aoki, who is uh, driving paralyzed from the waist down. He has a hand control for the for the throttle and the brake, and I'm sure we'll talk about that and go on board with him a little bit later on once the race gets underway. So the car's about to pull forward. Interested to see what the VIP guest driver um, can do in this one. Mario Dominguez, the guest driver from uh, Saudi Arabia, was Abby Eaton, and she's tuned in watching from home. So a very good evening, Abby. Must be past your bedtime. But anyway, um, Dominguez, He's not going to have actually had a lot of running because we didn't have a qualifying session. Absolutely, and uh, cars are going to line up soon. And uh, these cars, to start, always a difficult moment for a racing driver. High adrenaline, high heart rate. Um, these Jaguar i e E-Trophy cars, all-wheel drive. But you can make a torque change as a driver, meaning you can actually change the torque distribution front and rear axle. So for the start, sometimes you'll see drivers going 50-50, and then immediately after starts, more rearward with the power. Here they come then, moving into position. There, you can see the, uh, the right-hand as we look of it, of uh, Takuma on the handle. We'll see more of that as the race goes on, but the Japanese driver joining the Jaguar i pace trophy for the rest of the Someone season. Someone's out of place there. Yeah. yeah, someone's a long way back. I think it's David Cheng, isn't it? No, it's, uh, no, it's Cabrera, sorry. It's a long way back, but anyway, we're about to go racing. Jaguars are underway in Mexico City. It's a really good start from Simon Evans. Can he put alongside Jimenez coming into turn one? He might just get a bit of an overlap here. Jimenez is late on the brakes though. Fires it into the first corner in the lead. Everybody else safely through that first corner. Superb start from Takuma Aoki. Yeah, he's made up a couple of places, hasn't he? As they come into the left-hander of turn three, he's made up two positions. I think David Cheng has dropped to the back as they now come down into turns five and six, the new extension of the circuit and looking to the outside there as they come into the right hander is uh, Baptista trying to get past but he runs a little bit out onto the grass we're on board with Dominguez in eighth place Balajela and Cheng now have dropped to the back of the order but Jimenez Evans Bueno and Powell still the top four as the light begins to drop 
in Mexico City. We are uh, just coming up to 10 to 6 local time. There's a bold move. Doesn't quite work out though for Cabrera, who may be under investigation for his starting position as they swing through the right hander now and back out through the final corner at Peraltada to complete the first lap. But Jimenez looking fairly comfortable ahead of Simon Evans. Thought Evans might have had enough of an overlap going into turn one to sort of pressure him a bit more. Yeah, it looked like he had a slightly better launch, but then just didn't manage to uh, keep it uh, keep it going. Uh, ah. Meanwhile, David Chang immediately taking attack mode on the first lap. Attack mode activation zone uh, in between turn 11 and 12 here in Mexico. Uh, drivers have to mandatory take attack mode twice during the race. Slightly different from Formula E, though. You don't have to finish the entire time of the attack mode uh, before the finish. Oh, what, what happened there? Cabrera's got a problem. Yeah, Cabrera. I think a puncture. It sounded like a mechanical. Is it front? Must be a puncture. I think it's a puncture. Rear left, yeah. rear left. The wheel is pretty much, the tyre is pretty much off the rim, look. Yeah, it's probably a puncture going wide in turn one. Oh, and a spin. Alice Powell facing backwards. What has happened there? She wasn't really fighting with anyone, was she? She was ahead of our, I think she was all by herself, wasn't she? Maybe, maybe not, but I, I feel like she was uh, in front of Algasebi. Here comes Dominguez. Oh, big moment. Oh, big crash. Cheng. And Colliding so with Mashbal Jaila, And that, no doubt, will bring out the safety car. It looks as though Cheng kind of lost a bit of control there. Cheng obviously on uh, attack mode. So had the run on Bal Jaila on the run to towards turn nine. Attack mode giving 20% more power, so very significant amount. Yeah. Look at this, Cheng was, oh, they had contact. That's why Cheng lost control. Yeah, Bal Jaila saw Cheng coming, tried to close the inside line, uh, but probably was already too far alongside. And, or was he made contact? Safety car deployed then. So Sergio Jimenez and uh, Simon Evans will pick up the Jaguar I pace safety car. Bueno in third, Dominguez up in for fourth place then after all of that. He's managed to get up three places. And uh, Alga Sebi in the attack mode. But Mash Balajela in the wall, unfortunately. And uh, this will take a little bit of time to, to clear up. Jimenez, then Evans, then Bueno, then Dominguez. So let's have a look at the replay of the start. Not quite sure. Good launch here for Simon. Yeah. Look to the inside. Break maybe a tad early to turn one. Of course, always uh, difficult to judge as well. Uh, these, uh, these drivers uh, haven't done qualifying. And normally for qualifying, everyone gets a brand new set of tires. So actually now starting the race on a brand new set. Uh, it's always kind of a bit of a feel where to brake, especially since you've never really arrived into turn one uh, with this speed, obviously. Slightly slower than normal. This was the battle coming out into the left hand. Oh, yeah, so there, there was the left puncher for Cabrera. Yeah, that's probably a result of uh, going slightly wide into turn one. If you go through the grass, you've got this little edge of the tarmac, and then it's very easy, especially in the early phase of the race, where the tyre pressure are still a little bit low, um, to then damage the sidewall of the tyre if you give it a big hit. There come the marshals out onto the circuit. We'll also try and get to the bottom of what happened with Alice Powell as well. Dropped down to ninth position. And uh, she was facing backwards at the, the hairpin, but we never... But we'll try and get to the bottom of why that happened. But Jimenez out in front, Evans in second, Bueno third. Dominguez fourth, Agasebi fifth, leading the Pro-Am class. And uh, with the Yachi Shang and Sun Chao missing this race, it's a chance for, I was going to say Mashbel Hajela, but certainly Fahad Agasebi to try and close in on those two if they can take the win. And Agasebi it is, who is leading the class at the moment with 20 minutes plus one lap to go behind the safety car. Here they come again to confirm the point is for qualifying, not for pole position. So Sergio Jimenez didn't get a point for starting off pole. And that rings a bell. I think that was the same last year with Simon Evans in uh, Saudi Arabia. So there they are still tied on points, Simon Evans and Sergio Jimenez. As we, uh... Oh no, Evans did get a point last year in Diria.
according to uh, the championship standings, Evans got a point in Diria last year for uh, despite there was them being no qualifying. So yeah. there we go. Bit of a discrepancy, but I'm sure uh, that is the, the truth. There's Mash Pagela getting out. What happened to Alice Powell then? We're on board with her. Coming down into turn five and six. Oh, oh. she could get a nudge. So who was that from? It must the, have been right Alga Sabi. No, oh. she's all by herself. Also, a puncture, perhaps? Yeah, puncture. Yeah, the left. right rear puncture, yeah. you're right. Yeah, left rear, left rear. Oh, le that was left rear, was it? Yeah. Okay. And then this was the crash again. Mash Bauer, Jayla, and David Cheng. Yeah. Mash trying to uh, close off the inside line, but David Cheng already just alongside behind his rear wheel. Uh, made contact, and then obviously the car swinging out of control for both of them, uh, unable to avoid further. Uh, Excellent. So they're lifting that car away. Hopefully we'll be getting racing underway again soon. So has Powell pitted? Yeah, Powell has pitted then, so that makes sense. Yes, probably did a tire change. And so did uh, Manuel Caguera. Yeah. So two punctures at the start of this race. Cacabueno got a puncture in free practice. Are they just attacking the curbs too much, do you think? Yeah, very likely. And it's, it, I don't think it's a curb. I think it's more uh, turn one, the out of turn one, and also there where we just saw Alice Powell through turn seven, where we try to almost cut a little bit through the grass, turn one obviously on the outside, and but then when you rejoin the track coming from the grass, there's always this sharp edge. It's much sharper than a curb stone would be, uh, and this is very likely to damage the tyre, especially when the tyre pressure is low, uh, just after the start of the race. So safety car now, and uh, contrary to uh, what the regulations are in uh, ABB Formula E, the drivers here in Jaguar i e Trophy are allowed to go and take attack mode uh, under the safety car. I yeah. don't think drivers would do it, I wouldn't do it, uh, for the simple reason is that the attack mode, as it's located here, the activation zone, you won't really lose any time, so you will actually benefit from the one and a half minute of attack mode once you go through and activate it. Yeah, so we will see whether they, they might do it when the safety car is coming in this lap, for example. Let's go down to the pit lane, Amanda Stretton is down there. That's right, I've just been finding out what's been going on with the puncture story. So it seems David had a puncture, Alice did, and I think the other Chinese car. So three cars have been in the pits with punctures. Okay, yeah, yes, well we saw Cabrera. Cheng probably came in because of his crash as well. That probably didn't help, and I think he's uh, still in the pits. So it's Cabrera and Powell, the two that pitted four punctures. And the, uh, then the aforementioned one from Cacabueno yesterday. That's right. I think Alice and the... Uh, certainly Alice went back out. And I think, unfortunately, David Cheng has had to retire the car. Yeah, he's still in the pits. But Manuel Cabrera has come back out again and joined the back of the pack. There he is there behind uh, Takuma Aoki. Uh, but is he a lap down? I think he's a lap down. So his race is pretty much over. And Powell is a lap down as well. So that's a real shame for those two through sort of relatively no fault of their own, uh, they have uh, dropped down the order. Safety car deployed. This may be the last lap behind the safety car, potentially, because it looked as though the marshals are doing a pretty good job, actually, of getting rid of Mash Balhajela's car. Very uh, clearly visible, by the way, there, the, uh, the so-called marbles on the outside mm. of the ide ideal line going to the last corner. This, of course, first time ever. Jagger i e Trophy racing after ABB Formula E. So the track is in an entirely different condition from what it was uh, when these drivers uh, were on their last time. Uh, a lot more grip, a lot, a lot more grip. Uh, and it was very interesting to see how the drivers have anticipated that with their engineers. Uh, are able to, here we see, left front damage with uh, David Chang's car. Yeah. Uh, able to make setup changes on the suspension, roll bars, uh, ride heights. And that obviously will uh, quite crucially change the handling of their car. Uh, sometimes just to suit your own driving style, sometimes of course also to uh, suit the track conditions. I think they raced after them in Monaco last season. I think. I might be wrong. But it's certainly unusual, especially when they only really raced yesterday on uh, a sort of dampish track as well at times. Uh, safety car in this lap, and as a result, everybody takes their attack mode. The top three, four do. Alga Saibi doesn't. Not as Baptista Aoki. Uh, and Cabrera and Powell haven't been allowed to unlap themselves either.
because that sometimes can happen behind the safety car, but not for Cabrera and Powell. So really, they are resigned to only gaining places in these last 14 minutes if people retire. Safety car comes in, green flag, racing back underway. Jimenez and Evans, the two drivers tied for the lead of the championship, and they're pretty close actually coming down into turn one. Jimenez covers the inside. Evans is going to sweep into the apex and try and... Oh, he's got a bit out of shape there, and Kaka Bueno is right behind him. It might be Bueno that takes advantage here as they come into turn three. Evans having to defend there a little bit into turn three. Heartbreaking, you've got a lot of sideways load on the car. Still, you're steering not straight. Quench when you're going to hit the brakes. The same applies here for turn five, the new hairpin on this year's configuration here in Mexico. Big slide there for yeah. Cabrera. Looks like he hasn't got another punch again. He? Yeah, the left rear's gone. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Probably did exactly the same thing in, in turn one. Run wide, go through the grass, hit the sharp edge, returning to the track and uh, damaging the, the tire. I think I heard it pop. Yeah. I heard like a boom almost as uh, yeah, they were coming down it's towards quite the... Often, uh, it's quite often you, you damage the sidewall of the tire and once you then put load on it, it basically breaks. Because he activates his attack mode, sorry. Yeah, that's why we always get the instructions from the engineers. In the early stages of the race, stay away from the curb stones. Because in the early stages, low tire pressures, easy to damage. You always see it in the British touring cars at Thruxton. Because there's huge curbs at the exit and they're always told stay off the curbs, but you can't, can you, racing drivers? You can't stay, you can't resist those curves. Yeah, you, you have to be very disciplined. Uh, bear in mind, the race, see, now we've spent a lot of time behind the safety car, but uh, the entire duration of the race, it's very easy to lose a race, as you see in the first two laps, but uh, you can easily gain it back if you just give up a few seconds on those initial laps. And I guess the rear left is also the one that takes most of the strain on this track as well anyway. Exactly, yeah, it's a very, like side track when it comes to the tire wear. The left rear is uh, definitely taking the most wear uh, because of the long turn two, so basically one from turn one to going to turn three, yeah. uh, and of course the parabolica. Attack mode here only lasts for a lap as well. It's a, a, a minute 30 you get, and that lap is a minute 40, so that's the other. Once you're in attack mode, you've got to try and take advantage of it. Yeah, and one another thing here, I think, which is unique in Mexico, is the, the way that the attack mode is located in between turn uh, 11 and 12, is that you, even if you have a car following you closely, it's very hard for the yeah. car following behind to sweep around the outside. So not just you can use it as an offensive tool, but also as a defensive tool here. 11 minutes plus one lap to go. Alice Powell activates her attack mode. She's got ahead of Manuel Cabrera, but is uh, a lap behind Takuma Aoki, so he's not going to make any more progress unless people drop out of the race. Race leader Sergio Jimenez, half a second only ahead of Simon Evans, and then it's uh, 1.3 seconds back to Caca Bueno in third. Dominguez doing a good job, actually. One and a half seconds off the back of those front runners, and uh, yeah, he he's, doing a he's doing a decent job, I have to say. Absolutely, especially considering the fact that there was no qualifying. Yeah. So First time he got in the car here in Mexico, really hard to immediately get grips onto, uh, onto these cars. Of course, Mario Dominguez, really, really experienced driver, many years, very successful in champ car. But these cars, Jaguar IPC trophy cars, a completely different animal. Uh, not just electric, of course, fully really electric, but also the fact they're heavier, they respond differently on the throttle pedal, the tires are different, center gravity is different, basically almost anything, anything that you're used to, put it aside when you drive these cars. Right, let's watch Takuma Aoki. On the right-hand side is his, uh, is his hand control. So when he pushes his hand downwards, he's putting the throttle on. When he pushes the lever forward, forwards, he's braking. Correct, and it's, it's not an uh, electronic system or whatsoever. It's just a purely mechanical system. It's literally just a big pole. It's a big pole <laughs> resting on the brake pedal. So you can imagine, once you put his arm forward, it presses the brake pedal, literally. And bear in mind, these Jaguar IPC Trophy cars don't have any brake as electronic brake assistance, so he needs to put, let's say, roughly... Oh, Cacabueno puncture from third place in his first race back in the championship. Cacabueno has a puncture. He's pulling into the pits, and his race now is pretty much done. Yeah. He may not lose a lap. Actually, he will. He will lose yeah. a lap. I am absolutely wrong there. Simon Evans now on the back of Jimenez. Just a note, Takuma Aoki um, 
was paralysed from the waist down after an accident in 1998, a year in which he finished fifth in, uh, in motorcycle racing with Honda. So he was a, a motorcycle racer. And uh, yeah, um, he's up in, uh, but Dominguez is up in a third place, yeah. the Super battle Mario. for the league. Super Mario. And it's Jimenez and Evans who are battling for first position. Dominguez, will he be, could he be the first VIP driver to get on the podium. podium? I think he is. I still think the record is uh, Ellis Powell. Is it? season one race oh, one. Abby Eaton was on the podium in Syria. Powell finished fifth. And Abby Eaton, no, she finished fourth. Oh. But that is the record, actually. So Abby Eaton has the record. Well done, Abby. But until today, potentially. Eight minutes plus one lap to go. Looks like Simon Evans uh, slightly faster than uh, Sergio Jimenez. So now he needs to be very tactical in the way that he's going to use his attack mode. Obviously, he needs to respond to what Jimenez is doing. If Jimenez would take his attack mode, he definitely doesn't, he shouldn't take it. And of course, when he takes it, Jimenez can't respond as he is in the front. And then he will have exactly one lap, just slightly out of the attack mode zone to, uh, to try to make that move. Use that extra 20% extra power to make a move. Oh, here comes Takuma. He's trying to get past Baptista for fifth position. Oh. He's gone in a bit deep. Marbles, marbles. Whoa, kept it out of the wall. Nicely done. Aoki up into fifth place. Great drive. Cacabueno emerged. Oh, and here's Alice Powell trying to get involved in the fight for no real purpose other than fun, because she is still a lap down. But Cacabueno came out, I think. Just behind the leaders. Yeah, yeah. just behind the leaders, so in front of Alice Powell. So in uh, seventh place overall, Cacabueno. Oh, this is quite a bit, yeah. Yes, exactly, that does make sense. Oh, a hit. Powell and another hit in the side of Baptista. That's something Alice needs to try to avoid because she needs to now just stay on track and finish the race uh, because she will score points for the championship, will, which can be very valuable, uh, of course, towards the end of the season. Aoki, Takuma Aoki there making maximum use of his uh, attack mode. Yeah. Ranger 20% extra power and uh, just driving around the inside and then slash outside uh, of Baptista going into uh, turn three. So Powell, late in the day, went for the inside at turn nine. The second hit actually was, Powell wasn't really coming over, but um, Baptista was trying to stop the slide. Here are the top two. Jimenez and Evans. Aoki is going to be on the podium. On the pro podium in his first race, potentially. Six minutes plus one lap to go. You can see... Uh, <laughs> These two take each other out, he could win it. Yeah. <laughs> you can see Sergio Jimenez uh, being slightly more careful in the areas uh, that are very likely to damage the tyre. Uh, turn one and especially turn seven. Not cutting as much as he did previously in the pre-practice. When is Simon Evans and Sergio Jimenez going to use their final attack mode as well. They've both got one remaining. They have to use it. They have much. to use it. I suppose if I'm Jimenez, I'll, I'll wait until the last lap, ideally. But if I'm Evans, I want to use it before the last Absolutely. lap because to take advantage of it. Absolutely. And attack mode activation works uh, similar to Formula E. Before the drivers go through the activation zone, they need to press the, the boost button on their steering wheel, which is on the left-hand side. Um, after Powell they press it, they've got five seconds to go through the three loops. Powell's got a left rear puncture. This is not a good day for punctures. That's, Powell. That's the second one. It's surprising because in both the shakedown and the free practice, we've had only one puncture, I think. Yeah. And it could be because of the fact that Formula E has run, probably a lot of drivers ran slightly wide on the exit of turn one, dug a bit of a hole there, and then, yeah, giving a bigger impact on the, on the left rear tyre and rejoining. Four and a half minutes to go. Jimenez and Evans ride together. Here comes Evans, he's going for it now. Through attack mode activation, now he's got one lap to try and take advantage, but he's dropped so far back, even just activating that attack mode. 
one lap now to try and catch up and, and, and make this count. Yeah, he has got this run towards turn one to try to close as much of the gap as possible, and then the best overtaking opportunity for him would probably be going into turn nine. That's what I would think. He's closing back in, actually. I think into turn nine is a really good yeah. chance here. You're right. He needs to focus on a good exit out of turn five and keep his foot down through seven, and then uh, we'll put him in a good position for turn nine. Strong on the braking there. It's getting really close now already. This is going to be the key moment in this third round of the championship. Oh, Jimmy is defending there, so sacrificing a bit of his exit probably is out of five. Evans has got a decent drive out. This is the chance for the win for Simon Evans. Jimenez immediately goes defensive, and Evans is on the outside. Can he get the job done on the outside into turn nine? He can. Evans into the lead of the race in Mexico City. Mega. Mega. Now Jimenez will need to do the reverse. Back to him. Exactly. Jimenez almost immediately needs to take a tech mode as well, which he does. And now it's up to Simon Evans to put his head down and try to keep the gap almost. Make no mistakes. So can Jimenez do the same thing next lap? Evans has now taken the provisional lead of the championship with that move. And Jimenez will be frustrated if that's the case, because he's the man who started on pole position. Shows in... the value of a tech boat here in Mexico. Yeah, absolutely does. Into the braking zone for turn one. Jimenez already very close, similar to what we just saw with Simon Evans. Will he be able to repeat? He's closing. Oh. Is the victory of his brothers, Winch Evans in Formula E. Wouldn't that be quite something? An Evans clean sweep in Mexico City. Evans hasn't defended as much as Jimenez did, but Jimenez is, is so close. close. Got a good exit as well, Jimenez, so I'm expecting him to have a similar run. This should yeah. be it. Here they come down towards turn nine. Surely Evans can't hold off Jimenez here unless he's super late on the brakes, and he's not. Jimenez back in front, back into the lead of the race and the championship. What can Simon Evans do? The crowd are on their feet in the Forest Hall. Jimenez's attack mode ends now, so it's got to be an old-fashioned move from Evans. If he wants to win this race. Through the peril tarde. Jimenez has got a good run out. One minute plus one lap to go, so this is the penultimate lap of the race. Two more to go in the third round of the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy season. Simon Evan putting full pressure on Sergio Jimenez. I do think Simon's got a slightly better car today than Jimenez has. Looks a little bit faster, but then of course, it's always a trick of uh, being able to pass. Uh, we've seen many other races in Jaguar IPC Trophy. Very, very small differences between the drivers when it comes to, uh, to lap times. Just a mere few tenths, sometimes covering the entire top five, top six. So yeah, it's very hard then in the race to uh, really make a move purely based on that pace. Alice Powell's in her second attack mode, but uh, still a lap down on sort of everyone. Jimenez is pulled a bit of a gap there coming into turn nine, hasn't he? I yeah. don't think Evans has a response here. Good sliding there. For Simon Evans. Oh, and a spin. And that is uh, Cabrera again. Where is he? Turn two? No, yeah, to yeah turn, turn three. Two, turn three. Quite sure how he's uh... must have lost it on the under braking. Yeah. Quite tricky braking there because he got quite a lot of steering at the moment. He hit oh. the brakes. Oh, he tried to overtake. And he's oh, on the about this time. Oh, yeah. on the marbles and the dust. Yeah, it was a good effort, but Baptista closed the door. Mario Dominguez running in third place then. Is he going to beat Abby Eaton's record? 
of the highest place VIP finisher. Don't forget Fahad Al Gosebi. Haven't really seen him much this race, but he's driving a very strong, strong race. No mistakes at all, and uh, scoring very valuable points for the championship and the win in Pro M so far. Final lap of the race into the stadium section, the Foro Sol. Jimenez onto the brakes, into the right hander. Gets it stopped. The fans loving their fellow Central South American leading the way. And out now into the Peraltada for the final time. Sergio Jimenez lost the lead briefly to Evans. Fort got it back. And he's going to take the win in Mexico City and take the lead of the Jaguar I-Pace Championship. Jimenez wins in Mexico City, just ahead of Simon Evans. Here comes Mario Dominguez. Cacabueno finishes the lap down in seventh place. Mario Dominguez breaks Abby Eaton's record and finishes third on the road. Fahad al wins Pro-Am class. And here comes Takuma Aoki, flashing his lights to finish third in the pro class in his first race in the Fantastic. Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. Very, very, very good result, very impressive. Bearing in mind, Takuma Aoki had not driven the car at all before a shakedown here in Mexico. Here now, a couple more cars still to finish. It's the second place Pro-Am finish for Adalberto Baptista. A debut podium in class. Finishing, uh, that's David, no, that's Cabrera, who finishes uh, across the line behind, and Alice Powell finishes in eighth place, which still is fifth points. in class, yeah. yeah. All the applause for Sergio Jimenez. I think Takuma Aoki also deserves a big applause. Absolutely. Uh, writing history here. First driver in Tega IPC Trophy, a disabled driver. No use in his back, hand control. Um, yeah, very impressive race. Jimenez, the reigning champion. and has taken the victory and has now moved to the top of the championship. He was tied on points with Simon Evans. Coming into this weekend, didn't get a point for pole position, apparently, but he is getting the points for the win. Making his way back round, back into the pit lane. Wasn't easy at all for Jimenez, under big pressure. Evans took his opportunity when he had it, got into the lead of the race. But Jimenez fought back. Took another victory. And there's Mario Dominguez, very happy with that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's over the moon, Mario. But celebrations, most of all, for Sergio Jimenez, winner in Mexico City of the Jaguar I Pace E Trophy. And uh, a hug with Mario Dominguez, a hug with all his crew. It was a tough one for Jimenez. And there's the high five with that Alberto Baptista in the third of the ZEG Icaros Jaguar Brazil cars. Jimenez, former teammate of Lewis Hamilton in 
Formula Renault UK back in the early 2000s. And now the reigning champion of the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy Series. As the sun begins to set in Mexico City, here's a look at the results. Sergio Jimenez, Victoria, six tenths of a second ahead of Simon Evans. Mario Dominguez finishes third in the VIP car. Fahad Algasebi, fourth overall, winning the Pro-Am class. Takuma Aoki in fifth spot, really impressive. Third in class, 10 out of 10 for Takuma Aoki on his debut, having started uh, so far back. And Alberto Baptista in sixth. Cacabueno, Alice Powell, Cabrera, all picking up punctures in a big crash between David Cheng and Mash Balajela. Eliminated those two from contention. Bueno and Power ended up a lap down. Sergio Jimenez, Sergio, many congratulations. You looked like you were fairly dominant. There was a moment where attack mode definitely came into play and you were training places with Simon. But are you happy? No, I'm very happy. I mean, the race was very tough. Simon was very fast also. Some parts I was better than him. Uh, I was struggling in the high speed, like turn one and the break and turn two, but in the, in the mid sector I was a bit faster in the exit for the uh, straighter also. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, I was waiting him for the last, uh, for the last <laughs> attack mode. I tried to open the gap, but uh, he could pass me and then I took again and passed in the same place. It was perfect, I mean, for the win there is. And what would have happened if he'd used his attack mode and you'd both ended up on the last lap? Well, it uh, should be good for me then. <laughs> so I think who is in the front, depending on the track, or how it yeah. works the attack mode, should, it's better waiting than, than news. So uh, when the safety car go, went out, uh, we used the first time. Everyone we used because it was the right place to, to do. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I mean, uh, it was tough, but uh, everything. This weekend when I was in the track, I was P1. Listen, you were really dominant in the free practice session yesterday, which of course determined the grid as well. Attack mode definitely came into play. Do you think attack mode is now making this racing even better? Uh, for sure, because uh, now we have this attack mode, we have more power, and uh, you, you have a strategy also, depending how long uh, this, the attack mode working, and uh, yeah, even make the race better. I think in the streets will be much better even, because we have much more power and uh, we'll be for controlling the car, will be very interesting, so I'm, I'm really exciting to go, ready to, to roam to see how it works. Well, you're now leading the championship. Many congratulations. Vernon, you've got Simon Evans. Yes, thank you, Amanda. I do have Simon Evans. Simon, second place, flip-flopping with Sergio. That was a good race. Yeah, really good race. Um, obviously, got him under the attack mode, but as soon as I did that, I knew that if he did it straight away, he was going to get me back. But, um, hey, great result. I, I think we're clearly the fastest car then, just couldn't quite get past. So it's a real bummer we didn't get to qualify today because um, I think, you know, obviously, looking at the pace then, we... we Potentially could have been off, off first, um, but hey, is what it is. Um, I can't wait to get to Rome. Uh, I feel like we've been the fastest car every race this year, so I just need to maximise. I mean, second is still great points, uh, so I'm still leaving here very happy, and the Evans brothers were probably the fastest in Mexico all weekend, so it's good. We're stood here listening and watching the uh, Mexican celebrations with Super Mario. He's over the moon, unbelievable. Uh, but obviously a fierce competitor come on and snatch third. Yeah, absolutely, you know, so it's the first VIP driver to get on the podium, so, uh, uh, you know, amazing credit to him. Um, stayed off the walls and uh, hopefully he might uh, attempt to come back and join the series full time. Now, Sergio uh, Jimenez seems to have a hold, uh, a grip over you at the moment. Uh, how do you think you can attack him? How do you think, are there any flaws in his driving that you can see and really, really get under his skin? Um, no, I think this weekend, if we could have qualified today, I think, I know yesterday they were cutting the stadium section really bad, and um, and I wasn't. I was the only driver not to get a lap deleted for track limits. So, and then I think it showed then that they must have been kind of really bad. But um, he, he's a very consistent, he, you know, he's, he's very cool under the helmet in terms of pressure. So it's hard to force him into a mistake. So I, I'm going to have to out-qualify him. And I've got to ask you, uh, Mitch did extremely well in Formula E. You've got a second in the IPS. Where's the party, Simon? I don't know. I think last last year... I Hang on a minute. <laughs> You're a Kiwi. You should know automatically where the party is. Yeah, maybe if there's some... Uh, you can get spates or some twoies or something. <laughs> let's go. We'll crack open those. Classic Kiwi beer. Love that. All right, let's go over to Amanda. Thanks, Vernon. Yes, I'm here with Fahad al -Ghassabi. You've won the Pro-Am. Many congratulations. I mean, you really had a tough time in your home race in Saudi Arabia with that big crash. Must be awesome to come back here with a race win. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like such a relief. Um, I feel like the pace is getting better with, um, you know, with more track time and, and 
overall, I'm very, very happy with the result. Managed to pull a big gap in the lead and um, beating up the race and just hold on to that and keep it to the finish. There are lots of incidents. Uh, I'm lucky I didn't get caught up in that. Uh, Mash, my teammate, fortunately couldn't finish, so I hope he's okay. Absolutely. I think he, I hope he's okay as well. But listen, every time you go out on the track, are you learning? Are you learning more about the car and the way to drive these? Absolutely. I mean, it's unlike any car I've driven before. It's very heavy. The way the torque kicks in is also very different. So uh, every, every, every moment on the track is an opportunity to learn. So, uh, yeah. Great stuff. Well, listen, I definitely put it down to the fact that we ate the crickets together <laughs> yesterday. It definitely helps. The <laughs> definitely helps. The, the, the loads of protein in the crickets, absolutely. Vernon. Takuma, that was that was pretty special. Uh, congratulations. How did it feel? Yeah, so yeah, very incredible. So this result because uh, I am end of uh, grid and uh, so uh, so so big uh, chance give me a uh, jagger and uh, Team Yokohama Challenge. It is so wonderful day. So because uh, I am first time this race and uh, not uh, enough to the setting and uh, not enough to uh, learn to the this course. Anyway, so I'm happy. How many laps did it take you to really get used to breaking with your hands? Every. Every. Oh, all. Oh, really? Sure, all. So I, can, I, I couldn't uh, move my legs yeah. and I using uh, all only my left hand yep. and braking there and axle here and uh, steering is still my right hand, single hand. And uh, but uh, anyway, so I can I can do that. Yeah, amazing performance. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. So next next time, so I want uh, to more improve. All right, thank you, thank you. Amanda. Well, Mario Dominguez, you are a very popular VIP driver. Look at this, you've got flags Two all... flags. Viva Mexico. Viva Mexico, absolutely. Listen, awesome that you actually managed to get a, a third place in the race. But my goodness, what a race. It was incredible, really hard to hold on at the end. You know, we made some changes that we wouldn't know how the car, the car was going to react. We just, uh, you know, flipped the cards, but it played out very well. I want to thank so much my team. They played a great, you know, everything here. Uh, my mechanic, my engineer, Neil and David, Niall and David, and all the Jaguar crew. It's a, it's a dream come true to race for Jaguar. You have so much history in motorsports. And here we are, we've got a podium in Mexico City in an international event. I'm the second driver to have, I mean, the, the first driver to have ever done that twice. So I'm super happy. Well done, you have made history indeed. Congratulations to you, my friend. Party tonight. Yes, we're going to celebrate with all the Jaguar people uh, British style. British style, fantastic. Vernon, you found hope in amongst the melee. I have indeed. I'd like to know what the Mexican perception of partying British style really is. Uh, all right, hope in. Yeah, hope in. Uh, a great race, and once again, attack mode really coming into its own, really proving that it's a great innovation in motor racing. Yeah, absolutely, and here in Jagger I-Pace E-Trophy, 20% more power when you go to attack mode. And, and tracks here, like in Mexico City, with slightly longer straight, it really panned out well, and it really was a massive tool to make it overtake a move. Almost decided the win of the race, well, it kind of did. Um, Simon Evans perfectly executing it, and then Sergio Jimenez uh, repeating that. Is he catchable, Amanda, Sergio Jimenez? I think he is going to be catchable. I think really what that race proved is how important qualifying is, first of all. But we know from history that Cacabueno is a man to be reckoned with. When he gets his elbows out, he yeah. means business. I mean, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And now, I mean, having missed the first two races, uh, not scoring this round, the next race uh, in Rome, 4th of April, will be extremely important for him. And he really will be fully on top of that. And and that's, that's, sorry, Amanda, that's I, when we get back to street racing on inner city circuits where it gets tighter and where, as we've seen in the past, Cacabueno loves a fight. Absolutely. And after all, how many eye paces does Sergio Jimenez actually need? <laughs> <laughs> well, bear in mind, it is a street circuit in Rome, but it also has got very long straights. So I'm really looking forward to see attack mode yeah. being deployed there again and uh, exciting racing. Attack mode was just, it, it made the race today. Yeah, absolutely. Made, we saw earlier today in ABB Formula E and again in Jaguar IPS E Trophy today. Um, it really gave an edge to the drivers to uh, make that deciding move. Shame about David, though. Of course, David Cheng, who was standing in um, with Team China, 
using attack mode and then just getting caught out by it. Yeah, he was very smart to take attack mode on the very first lap where the field was still very compressed. Um, potentially, you know, could have made more than one position uh, with the attack mode. Uh, had a good run on the run to turret turn nine. Um, got a bit of a nudge with Balhi Jela and then, yeah, both cars out of control, ended up uh, in tears. And we yeah. should also doff our caps to come on with, uh, to Thank Takuma. you, pardon. Takuma, 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 that's yeah, it, thank yeah. you. Tongue tied. Takuma yeah. Aoki, fantastic drive. Amazing. Wasn't it absolutely amazing? Yeah. Well, it was a race of massive highs. Let's just recap at what happened. The third round of the Jaguar I Pace e Trophy Series got underway with Sergio Jimenez on pole position. Simon Evans tried to attack him coming into the first corner, but the New Zealander wasn't quite able to find a way through. Takuma Aoki just sent it round the outside at turn one, gained two places. And that was just the start. Big accident for Mash. Mash Balajela colliding with David Cheng and hitting the barriers. Then there was a puncture for Cabrera. And a puncture for Alice Powell. Both were sent spinning out of the race. Safety car was deployed because of that big accident when the racing got back underway. It was very much a two-way fight at the front still between Jimenez and Evans. Looks like the way that's going to be the whole season. Caca bueno was next up with a puncture. Wow, what car control to keep that one out of the wall. 10 out of 10, Kaka. But he would end up finishing down in seventh position. Evans went for attack mode. That gave him the advantage. He got to the outside of Jimenez and took the lead of the race away at turn nine. But Jimenez responded, activating attack mode and tried to fight back. And he was able to. Same place as Evans made the pass on him, he made the pass on Evans. Jimenez back into the lead of the race. There was another spin for Cabrera, this one after he got onto the dirty part of the track. But Sergio Jimenez never really looked like he was in too much trouble. Came through the final corner to take the win and to take the lead of the championship in the Jaguar I-Pace E Trophy. Delight for the Brazilian as he wins once more. Here's a look at the results then. After 17 laps of racing, Sergio Jimenez taking the win, six tenths ahead of Simon Evans in the end with Mario Domingos setting a new record with a VIP car finish and Fahad al Gasebi winning the Pro-Am class. So championship-wise, it's a six-point advantage, advantage now for Sergio Jimenez. Simon Evans in second position, Alice Powell in third. Takuma Aoki, with his one result, moves himself up into fifth place, ahead of Kaka Bueno, who's got a long way to go if he wants to challenge for this championship. And as far as the Pro-Am class is concerned, Yachi Chang still leading despite missing this race, but Fahad al Gasebi moves ahead of Sun Chao and is now just six points away from Yachi Chang at the top of the Pro-Am standings. Mash Balajela frustrated with another non-finish. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests... So it's time to get the podium ceremony underway. There you can see the drivers waiting. Sergio Jimenez on the left, so, Evans in the middle. Delay, let's welcome our winners. Firstly, we'd like to welcome the winners of the pro category. In third position, welcome to third Kuma place Aoki from Team Yokohama Challenge. It's Takuma Aoki, the Team Yokohama, Yokohama Challenge driver. Third place in his first race. Oh, fantastic. Simon Evans, from Team Asia, New Zealand. Simon Evans, second position. A thumbs up from the Kiwi. And in first position, please welcome Sergio Jimenez. But the winner, Sergio Jimenez. Another win and a six point lead at the top of the championship for the Brazilian. And now for the trophy presentation for third position, please join me in welcoming Frederick Duran, Managing Director for Jaguar Land Rover Latin Frederick America. Frederick Duran, the Managing Presenting Director the for Jaguar Land Rover Latin America, hands out the trophy to Takuma Aoki. <laughs> 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 
He's won a lot of things in his life, Takuma. But this is quite a special one. For second position, please welcome Martin Limpert, Overseas Regional Director for Jaguar Land Rover. Martin Limpert, the Overseas Regional Director for Jaguar Land Rover. Hands the trophy to Simon Evans. Not quite the one he wanted. But here comes and the winner's trophy. The trophy. For first position, please welcome Rubens Barrichello, race driver and record holder for most Formula One starts. Rubens Barrichello <laughs> hands the trophy to his compatriot, Sergio Jimenez. And now for the first place driver from the pro class, the national anthem. And now the Brazilian national anthem for Sergio Jimenez. Jimenez. The reigning champion at the top of the standings once again. A really, really great performance from Sergio Jimenez, but the standout drive today, no doubt, Takuma Aoki. Now for the Pro-Am classes. Today, and Alberto Baptista and Fahad al the, the winners in the Pro-Am class. The only two finishers actually in the Pro-Am class. And now for the trophy presentation for And the trophies position, will be handed out. Limpet, Once again, Martin Limpa handing out the trophy to the Brazilian at Alberto Baptista in the Pro-Am class for the less experienced racing drivers. But Fahad al Ghassabi now only six points away from the Pro-Am class championship lead. Rubens Barrichello hands it over. And Fahad al Ghassabi takes the trophy. He's absolutely over the moon with that. And well, he should be. He pushed Mario Dominguez all the way as well. Only seven tenths away from Dominguez in the end. Trophy's over. Celebration's over. Let's get down to Vernon Kay. Yeah, thank you very much, Jack. Amanda, what a race. I, I barely know how to catch my breath, actually. It's hard to even find the words to describe. What an amazing race that was. It stood us in good stead for the rest of the series, really, because now we know we've got really competitive drivers. It does, and we've actually got a lot of people in contention for podiums, both through the pro category and through the pro-ams, and it was wonderful that we actually had such a popular VIP driver for this race. <laughs> yeah, the whole, this whole arena where we are just went crazy, really did. Uh, all right, so we will see you next time when once again the Jaguar I-Pace hits the tracks of Rome.